Last night, we witnessed a card with two title fights and a third deemed the people's main event. On June 8th, 16,083 fans packed the Chicago's own United Center, drawing a live gate north of $2 million. The vacant Bantamweight Championship was contested between flyweight champion 14-2 and two with four straight wins against two of arguably the best in their division all time. Henry Cejudo and Magic Marlon Marias, who also rode four straight fights against the best of best at Bantamweight, would contest for the strap. In the main event, the self-proclaimed king of cringe, Henry Cejudo, defeated the Magic Man via TKO at 451 of round number three the fight seemed all in favor of marias with the first two rounds until he began to fade drastically in the third cejudo landed 47 significant strikes in the final round to marias's seven absolutely taking over and finishing the fight the efficiency of those strikes was also astonishing as it equaled out to 72 percent of henry cejudo's total strikes in the round with the win, Henry Cejudo becomes only the seventh person to win two titles in two different weight classes. He also becomes the fourth to ever do it while holding the same belt consecutively. And he also becomes the first to win an Olympic gold medal alongside those two different weight class championships. Dana White also mentioned that he, along with Amanda Nunes, might be the first ever people to de actively defend both championship belts inside the UFC, which is unprecedented as Conor McGregor, Daniel Cormier, and I'm missing one, have never defended their belt and vacated one of them shortly after winning the second one. Cejudo discussed before UFC 238 his intention of making a claim for the top pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC along with the best combat sports athlete of all time. And with his growing resume, it leaves fans and MMA junkies alike forming their own opinions on the King of Cringe's legacy inside the octagon, inside the wrestling community, inside the wrestling world, and just in combat sports in general. Moving down the card in the co-main event, Valentina Shevchenko, the bullet, defended her belt against the biggest underdog at plus 750 on the card, Jessica I. In the fight, it went all to how the odds supported the fight going. Valentina threw 33 strikes, landing 32 significant. That is a 97% landing efficiency, and that's astonishing for a woman's fight. Supporting a bulletproof vest at weigh-ins, the subtle shot at Valentina's nickname, The Bullet, in a sort of irony, was that Shevchenko finished the fight with a head kick, obviously a spot the bulletproof vest can't protect you, only 28 seconds That's fucking illegal. ...into the second round with one of the most brutal finishes of 2019, Shevchenko looks like the world eater at the women's 125 division and looks to hold that belt, looks to hold that belt for a seriously long time. The third fight and highly anticipated matchup between El Kakui, Tony Ferguson, and Donald Cowboy Cerrone was up next. Veterans of the UFC and MMA in general, fans knew what to look forward to when this fight was announced. Ferguson brought with him an 11 fight win streak while Cowboy brought this revitalized new streak of wins. In a fight that many of the fans think I should have covered first in the video, all week the fight was deemed the people's main event, and in the rounds we got, the fight lived up to expectation. With Ferguson averaging an insane 100 strikes per round and Cowboy 92.5, the difference was in the efficiency of the strikes. Ferguson outmatched Cowboy 52-38 to 38 in significant strikes in the first and widened that margin to 52-30 to 30 in the second. In a fight many fans clamored to be five rounds, by the end of the second, the fight was already finished. Cowboy busted and bruised, looked time took time to blow his nose, which swelled the puffing around his right eye, forcing the doctors to step in and stop the fight. He could not see from the right eye. Also notable, an illegal strike after the bell also led to controversy coming from Tony Ferguson's side. It was a clear bell ring, and then the shot after Tony Ferguson. Donald's in trouble. Both his eyes are swollen shut. Look at that. Oh. If this was somebody else, they would be called out like crazy, especially if your name is Duran Durandamine. Next up, however, at the end of the day, Tony Ferguson defeated Donald Cowboy Cerrone via TKO doctor stoppage in round number two. That's the official ending of the fight. Joe Rogan told us that Dana White told him that Dana is going to plan to run this fight back. And we'll get to see that as it fits in with the timeline as champion Khabib Nurmagomedov is slated to fight Dustin Poirier in Abu Dhabi all the way down the line at UFC 242. And this fight would be the perfect fight to have the same night to also secure a main event in case of an injury to one of the stars in the main. However, does Tony Ferguson, who was once screwed out of his interim title due to injury, tripping over a cord, going to fight again, as he also clearly deserves a shot at the title? I'll let you guys tell me that answer in the comments section below, as I continue to move on to Petra Yan defeating Jimmy Rivera via unanimous decision. 
Two of the judges in this fight gave Jan the 29 to 28, with one scoring Jan all three rounds in a 30 to 27. Jan controlled the ring for eight minutes, opposed to Rivera's two. However, in the striking department, Rivera edged out total strikes and significant strikes, with the numbers extremely close. This is a big win for Jan officially, and he may look to fight Pedro Munoz, who lost earlier in the prelims, in the future. Legoy Ivanov defeated Taitu Ivasa via unanimous decision as well, opening up the main card. The 13th-ranked Ivanov edged out each round in two judges' eyes, getting a 30-27. to The 12th-ranked Taitu Ivasa slugged as we thought he would, but didn't do enough to win the fight and slowed drastically in the final rounds. And finally... The prelim main event, undefeated prospect turning contender Tatiana Suarez defeated Nina Ansaroff via unanimous decision with the biggest difference being Suarez's high-level wrestling. Fight fans and fight experts alike knew this to be the case. Suarez, an Olympic wrestler, landed six of eight takedowns and one in strikes, significant strikes, cage control, and ground control. This does not tell the story. I'm not saying this tells the story because if you read the fight stats, you may feel like Suarez breezed through this fight breezed her way to a decision however the eye test in that third round showed us a lot that either Tatiana has holes in her striking or Nina Ansaroff is just really damn good I feel like it's a little bit of both but I feel free for you guys to give me your opinions in the comments below as well and that wraps up the UFC 238 ultimate recap I need you guys to let me know in the comments section below what you guys thought of the UFC's fifth pay-per-view of 2019 along with if you bought the pay-per-view on ESPN how did that go and what performance caught your eye last night in the, one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year? A lot of fight fans were excited because the fighting in general was just, we just knew it was going to be good. And it lived up to expectation with a live gate of 16,000 fans. We'll get to see the pay-per-view and ESPN numbers further down the line, but that'll do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Combat Sports Central. Peace out.